So, coming back here you will notice that uh, it is the enclosure that is ensure that corrosion will not lead to equipment failure. Materials used for packaging have to be resistant themselves not to corrosion or must be capable of being rendered res corrosion resistance by some surface modification. So, this is where we have a little issue with common materials like mild steel. Now, trying to be replaced by lighter materials like aluminum and magnesium silicon alloys and then we have plastics molded. Something has to be done uh, such that no all these requirements have to be met. If you use steel even today it is good there is no issue with you know steel heavy okay, and then corrosion. <laughs> it, by itself uh, you cannot do anything with uh, raw steel. So, my subsequent slides will show you about those things. You need to do some covering with it, something we cannot, we have to consider after all these things manufacturability. Term in this concept is used to denote the manufacturability or utility in the fabrication of components and parts made out of this material and not the manufacture of the material itself. So, if you want to stamp a few parts that is manufacturability meaning you have presses and then you keep all the presses and you do something and you have all those beautiful parts. I am sure you had a chance to watch TV probably on uh, National Geographic or uh, BBC or any other special programs or in your case if you are one of those curious people you can always go to YouTube and look for how car parts and all are stamped that is something absolutely huge monstrous presses and you have a transfer line when uh, some sheet comes and gets embossed and uh, it trimmed and it moves on like that. So, that is something manufacturability of parts out of that material is very very critical something a little ahead of it is the how you make the sheet itself that will come in a subsequent uh, lecture it is not easy to make a thin sheet. Now, typical fabrication process involves machining is where you can put a lathe or a milling machine or make holes and all that press work press work means using a power press various forms of casting and molding. Okay. Material of, of choice should be adaptable to existing or manageable techniques. One of the reasons why uh, plastics could not be you know suddenly used for replacing everything is that uh, if you are to take a car bumper and just try to make a copy of it in plastic it will never work, it will never work because bumpers used to be big monstrous uh, thing no like this and then they were all welded to the H frame. It made sense at once upon a time, but now right now if you see any car the bumper is a huge molded thing. If it is a small car it is about maybe 400 mm, it is a big car it may be some 400 to 450 mm such a big thing the whole thing is molded and then it is assembled to the remaining part of it. In the chance of a crash this whole thing crumbles and you are safe inside, but it is not a one is to one replacement for an existing metal press work line. You need to make new molding and uh, new techniques or how to even fasten it to the body and other fastening techniques as used by other, pl other uh, plastic uses like simple snap you put something and extend it and all that they are okay at the time when they leave the factory, but subsequently not okay. <laughs> subsequently there are problems and then you can even make a car uh, look at a car which has taken a couple of beatings. First thing that gives is all these um, non-metallic parts lose their shape and then it does not go and hook itself properly. Aspects like forming fastening, joining, welding, extrusion, free machining are to be considered. Mild steel can easily be welded, resistance welding is possible, 
but you cannot extrude steel. In contrast, aluminum can be easily extruded. Hence, I told you in the case of professional racks and all that, aluminum has practically replaced all the strong members, completely it has replaced. And then we need to do various operations. So, some places like if you need to tap a particular thing that is a form a screw thread, obviously mild steel is still king. I showed you the power supply cover yesterday and I said something called a plunge and tap is done. Imagine this is a flat sheet, flat sheet. So, they make a, a plunge like this and then they tap it all around like that. You mean to make a plunge and tap, what is initially a small thickness can be made into three times that thickness. After three times the thickness that whole uh, plunged one uh, conical portion can be made. You can either tap it or even use it for sheet metal, uh, I am sorry self tapping screws. In the unlikely case that you cannot use this, there is always a clip, they attach a clip and then that clip has formation of a single thread and it uses all the fasteners. So, the availability of tooling for a given application also is very very critical saying can we make it section thicknesses change all the time. So, you cannot just like that replace a mild steel tool with the I am sorry the job with the stainless steel may not be able to punch. Same thing it is various materials. So, something called fine blanking and all has to be done because the tool clearances those things are determined specifically for one type of material in one heat treated condition. The moment anything change there will be mild variations and long term uh, there will be a loss. After having covered the basic uh, strength and the manufacturability we come to the cost. Cost of the material should be commensurate with the cost of the product. So, the, <laughs> the reality is we have a psychological or something you are ready to pay for a given product. It is real, there is a target cost for every product. Now, somebody has to you know apportion all the target cost and say I am ready to spend so much time in the electronics or on the inter thing and then the basic materials. So, it is still a compromise. Sometimes it works, you are able to meet the target cost, otherwise you add features and then try to absorb the cost with the some of the other features. So, obviously, cost is the one of the very important thing. First thing started is the strength part of it. Second thing about the manufacturability, related to manufacturability and all that is the corrosion and uh, things. Thirdly, we have the cost which is really, really critical. Probably these three things determine our choice for the product and then we come to what you call availability and then the lot sizes and then how easy it is to procure and all that. In the case of metals, the basic metal still contributes to 50 percent of the cost of the product. Modification is uh, 50 percent, the basic raw material cost is there. Slowly things are tending towards even if they keep on reducing the <laughs> cost of fabrication, the metal cost continues to increase unlike plastic. In plastic it looks like the value addition by way of design and all is uh, costlier than the raw material itself. And now, the current thing is you and I know that uh, we should use recyclable materials. Recycling is expensive, how do we get all the plastics, how do we segregate, it is not like segregating dry and wet waste. So, if you have to look at any plastic part, the class of plastic also is mentioned in that, you have seen that no, PS, PPS, PC and then there is that symbol and number 2, 3, 4 and all that. This all comes into the cost, how well you can recycle the materials. Right now, we are able to get away with it. It is a matter of time before legislation or uh, our own upliftment or enlightenment will make sure that uh, the cost of recycling, the cost of 
what you call uh, getting irreplaceable things from nature needs to be considered at that time. Now, you know probably slowly it has come. Now, see the latest uh, packing materials while expanded polystyrene EPS form is still common lot of them are being replaced by things which use uh, cardboard. You do not use uh, just the EPS or uh, expanded polystyrene foam as much as frequently only really high value of uh, things and uh, where the cost is really seriously this thing they try to pack it with the thermocol box. Otherwise, slowly things are being replaced. So, come back coming back to the cost that element of reclaiming and recycling scrap value and disposal cost to, to prevent environmental degradation all these are to be considered. It is not a matter of just writing here it is it, you have to internalize I am sure you do it all the time. If now somebody were to give you something in a you have a choice hot coffee you can take it in a thermocol cup probably the worst or you can take it in a fully what do you say thermo formed uh, probably I do not know what the material is could be some type of a what you call thin sheet and then you have a cardboard and then finally carry your own cup. I know what you will prefer there is no doubt about it I am sure all of you given a choice you would like to carry your own cup next choice will be to have a cardboard cup last choice will be to have a polystyrene cup polystyrene it holds things better everything is there, but still non recyclable nothing you can do with the polys uh, that uh, what do you call a foam molded any foam cannot be recycled because there is no way of heating it and all that because it whole thing condenses to a fraction of the original volume and it cannot be reformed I do not know what happens to them uh, they say you push it into the ground I doubt. So, we have this issue about looking at disposable cost to prevent environmental degradation and then something the choice of the basic raw material influences the tooling cost which may include press tools, fixtures, casting dies, injection molds not easy no casting dies injection mold. So, it is very easy to say oh use a plastic injection molded part no no now we can 3D print it not true a few pieces 3D printing is ok under some conditions it is ok. When you want to make a mass produced product you have no choice but to go back for the old good old injection process. So, next to, uh, 2 or 3 slides I will uh, you know scroll through quickly material should be available easily in large sizes desirable for optimum production batch size time and cost of procurement size form composition commercial terms have bearing on the choice. I can make a beautiful aluminum extrusion, but uh, here at least here no a minimum of 100 kilo kgs of where a die is available we are expected to order 100 kgs it is still a lot of kilograms not easy, but then if it is a non uh, what do you call uh, intellectual property is not uh, part of it I can even buy the extrusions and try to make things what I like. So, obviously, the while so far what I have talked about are look like very um, simple technical things and then it is possible for us to make an analysis saying how flat it is use the theory of plates use the theory of shells and come to an optimum thickness you cannot make it. <laughs> Where, where we have started not easy to make things which can be made in small quantities. So, coming back to the next reasonable thing is the weight in critical applications of aircraft and aerospace portable equipment and non static applications weight 2 is a determined determinant yes heavy sometimes some things are heavy some things are not heavy materials with higher strength to weight ratios are preferred all other things being similar that is the reason why various alloys of aluminum all the way up to I think some of you may be heard about the 6000 series 6060, 6070 and then you must have heard of the 7000 series and if you are biking enthusiasts 
there is in fact a uh, big uh, discussion saying are the merchants taking you for a ride or uh, you can have a safe ride on a cycle which is uses you know a 6000 series aluminum with a 7000 series aluminum in reality if you actually look at strength might still is probably still king so you cannot really automatically replace a good old uh, what you call thin uh, tube uh, chassis and then expect the whole cycle to weigh anything lower a lightweight cycle probably is a little lighter weight than the other one but then uh, there are some advantages to it you use it so we come back to a few of the other considerations appearance all materials are expected to be smooth and clean and representing the original material character occasionally materials are chosen exclusively for their appearance chrome gold leather texture materials can be specified to represent grains bumps oh i think it's a repetition one of them represents the linear uh, grain how it is other represents the surface granularity okay these are so you would have seen uh, often they talked about talk about brushed chrome finish so chrome and as if you know somebody has taken a steel brush and try to make the scratches on it it has its own useful appearance i think the more you actually work with it you enjoy it more then some of the other things have smooth variations granularity about it it's important granularity is really 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 you know some of them make a very good texture so people go all the way about making something which looks leathery good point is pvc and all can be done bad point is growing crocodiles for making a bag that is bad so i suggest you know i mean this is not about uh, other things so if you want to make crocodile leather i think artificial crocodile is better instead of growing crocodiles and then trying to make uh, thing out of it something other than the surface texture and the granularity color in some cases materials are chosen with color to avoid further processing transparency wherever optical properties are color uh, optical properties are involved such as for windows lens light pipes and contrast enhancing filters tint transmissibility and refraction are considered total absorption or reflection may be needed so typically you remember this old thing no refractive index of a material so if you have a display which is deep deep set for various consideration you have a bezel lens on display is deep set if you just try to tilt to one side you can't see it properly because it's a narrow angle like that so in the front they put an optical what you call i will call i should call it a filter made of high refractive index glass so it can be very thick to the extent of maybe 20 mm 20 mm i think is 3 quarter inch for you moment you have a thick high optical index thing even if you tilt it it looks as if the back surface is coming out it looks like a little like in your school uh, probably in your 5th uh, or 6th standard you talked about how a pool will look shallow if you look at it from a shallow angle it looks shallow it looks as if the bottom is higher only if you look straight up at one particular thing only the particular angle of incidence it true depth will be perceived by your eyes so that material which has that uh, property of high refractive index is chosen in some application typically in filters another application i'm sure all of you know about is the good old uh, red led filter all red led is the light which is given is in a particular uh, spectrum so if you have a filter which allows light only to pass in that spectrum the remaining things can be hidden so you don't need a special mask only you know showing the led frame outside just put this uh, 
LED filter and everything becomes dark and you can see the glow automatically outside well known obvious application. Other electric huh, then something related to this is absorption or reflection may be needed you have seen this you know glasses coating and all other electrical electromagnetic compatibility electrostatic conduction reflection and absorption for high frequency radiation may be needed. This is uh, a special subject unlike all the other uh, what you call design elements which I have shown this still continues to be over the wall. So, unless you make a prototype and you test and then take a input from all your uh, persons who do it only after the equipment is fairly in a very last stage of integration they put it over the wall check it for uh, the other uh, electrostatic and electromagnetic uh, compatibility issues and then try to incorporate it. Conductive is still electronic, radiative is still mechanical. Any thing involve radiation and picking up and all that no it is still considered a issue with the enclosure design. What comes through all the contactors and all those things no it is considered as a electrical issue. <laughs> then we have other mechanical like acoustic damping oh technical word I saw something homogeneous something isotropic refers to the physical properties in all directions best non isotropic is probably a bamboo and replacements are carbon fiber something something. So, if you have a badminton racket carbon fiber, fishing reel carbon fiber everything you can think about in your glass flames because there we are interested in one direction how well it does and then we have full control about the flexibility. So, but should a sheet be having that issue yes when you make a transformer it is expected that the grains in silicon steel are all oriented in one direction in the direction in which the electromagnetic flux passes. So, there what is called grain oriented steel is used while it makes sense in the case of a transformer. In the case of electrical rotating machinery it is counter uh, what you call functional if you have it oriented there we must have a non oriented non grain oriented uh, material. We need silicon steel to have a higher gauss, but non grain oriented. So, you have non NGO non grain oriented and uh, you know grain oriented uh, steels for it. So, what looks relatively easy about this um, grain orientation and then isotropic is critical suddenly very very critical in such things. And then we have this nice beautiful thing new thing coming skinned structural forms we have structural form called SMC compound sheet metal uh, sheet molded uh, compound where one side of the thickness you can have it soft. If you see the wheel I mean our uh, chairs used for our uh, hand dress it is actually a foam inside, but outside you have a beautiful cover which is made to look with a little bit of embossing and all that made to look originally it was made to look like leather right now it has its own uh, various functions. And now one of my colleagues has worked on uh, what you call how to get energy out of uh, these things. So, they have embedded these uh, materials with uh, something which can generate energy, energy harvested. So, in these new materials it, we must be able to incorporate one inside the other can we have a heat sink can something be wearable can then something you know when you sit or when you press can something happen when you tilt can you generate electricity or in case of our lecturers no this should give us enough electricity to put us in the limelight enough power ok it is supposed to be a joke. 
probably I will take a small break here, I will continue with this uh, from the next lecture and then at this point allow me to show you a few of the things which I started last time. So, is it possible for you to connect this? Yeah. You remember this old hard disk all eventually replaced with this new pocket uh, hard disk. It looks a little similar is it not, but if you look carefully by the mold itself they try to create a texture in it, it is a very peculiar texture, it looks random. I do not know and then uh, to me it looks a little like that matrix uh, screen saver we used to have see that no some falling uh, all the numbers and all, but at the back that is not there something else is here you have seen that no small rubber uh, things are there and then this is where I wanted to tell you we have visual cues to make things look smaller than they are actually it is quite a thick fat thing. But the way they made a small contour here and the way they made a small contour here ok. The whole thing the edge what you see is only about uh, maybe about 80 percent of uh, the total. So, it looks thin though in reality is really thick it looks thin. It is possible because of now using molding technique and all that we can make these uh, things. Elements of this are very similar even with your cell phone. Who would have ever thought we all knew that you know a cell phone has a screen and all that no who would have thought the body should be made out of uh, glass. So, this fell and it got shattered luckily nobody got injured, but I continue to use it as a this thing no saying a fantastic arrangement by with this glass is used. Now, I will come back to uh, my favorite I think all of you know what it is no it is not just a torch it is a a battery backup. So, the thing is it uses that 1 6 I am sorry 1 8 6 5 0 cell inside and there is a small uh, what do you call booster. So, this basic cell is, is capable of holding 3.7 volts and it needs a charging current of 4.2. So, charging is relatively easy you feed in uh, 5 volts the little bit of thing you charge the phone charging is easy and then during giving out there is a small circuit here which just gives us the necessary 5 volts and then regulate it. The thing is this cover can be made with anything including metal it will be strong it would not break and uh, just need to put 2 caps. So, this can be easily be made in metal. So, even if it drops nothing will happen. Now, what if I want to change the form factor same this also has about the same uh, what you call functionality while they put a small switch here to make it uh, these they have played with the three LEDs it shows the state of the charge and so on. Same thing inside it is about the same, but by playing around with all the volumes and all that you see one of the dimensions has to be brought down nearly 20 percent it is less not much of compromise here however, not much of compromise, but then the height has been compromised a little. It looks like when they have run the test with a focus group probably they would have found out that this will sell as well as this that looks uh, too simplistic not designed and this has some element of I uh, will call it desirability by design. This I think I have shown you all along this has the same two cells. Now, slowly we are coming into oh there is a beautiful thing printed 13000 13 000 milliampere hours. So, it has probably 13 divided by 2.5 and all that no so many of those cells inside. So, we have 3 plus probably 2 because each is 2 5. I do not know it makes 5 cells or 6 cells ok. Now, we comes to our pet monster oh 
this is really really monstrous and they have happily printed a number like uh, huge number 30 ampere hours that is a lot of ampere hours. Now, when you look at an object like this it is heavy. So, uh, the design of this you know already there is a jump in uh, strength requirements from this to this ok extra extra it is heavy and this is light. So, someone has to work carefully even on the plastics what we have here it have to work carefully about it and uh, related a little to this is you already have three outputs here each of them are capable of giving I think each is one amp one of them may be a little more two amps like that which this has only two of them and then related to this is you also have this charging device and then you have a switch here and the moment you have uh, anything here no obviously you require uh, something which indicates a state of charge you have seen that we have some yellow colored uh, lights here you have three LEDs it shows. So, uh, an enclosure for this has to have slightly different thing and then if you look at the shape I have seen this is flat they have given a curve only this side this is the form detailing not necessarily manufacturing, but uh, it helps. So, here the objects inside no can be fully packed or uh, populated and a small thing has been done here wherever they could they have done this small thing which immediately adds a small element of novelty and probably differentiation from an existing thing. This looks boxy this looks like an ordinary box as if somebody has taken a lot of cells and then put uh, tape all around it duct tape this looks a little bit design both use materials which are you know partly metal partly plastic and then uh, have electrical requirements in this case should be fully isolated whatever happens nothing and then one very unwanted or you know undesirable thing is it should not thermally insulate the what do you call a box the inside and outside should not be thermally insulated. So, if you were to look at your uh, laptop charger and then if you have the good or bad luck of uh, losing one of them next time when you open it and see the top half of uh, top cover of it noise probably fully is an aluminum sheet and then it is closely it almost touches the cover and across that small thickness of the plastic the conductivity is not bad. So, if you take a 100 uh, VA charger which most chargers are about you know between 16 and 18 volts. So, I will just take it as 20 volts 5 to 10 amps they are capable of giving and then even if you take a 10 or 15 percent loss that is still a lot of watts which is converted into heat which needs to be transferred across the wall. So, plastics what was originally a very simple electrical insulator suddenly have to have a function of thermal conductors. So, people play around with a few of the properties which I am not know I am not a polymer engineer, but there are materials if you consult with them you will be able to make things at all. So, I will take uh, leave of you here and uh, so thank you when I get back I will see whether I can come out with a few more samples. The only exercise what you need to do is go around and see what materials you can identify in your lab or in case you are a hobbyist all around the house most likely you will find more interesting materials in your house than you would find in a lab or on yourself ok. So, we where have objects then if you are one of the persons who uses a phone and then you can probably go to various websites which will show what is inside a desirable phone. There are people who spend you know overnight on in a line to buy a I do not know u phone 
instead of using the other word no they buy this you phone or he phone or she phone bring it home attempt a jail break first second break it open and then put it on the net it is faster than food porn faster than you know your kitchen uh, food thing or about as fast they open everything and put it on the net so people like me I'm, i won't con consider myself no see no see person but i still i'll be curious to see how they have packaged all those things together how thin they are and then which part of the interconnection has been taken where how they have taken so have a look at all the preferably expensive devices either you call it i you know either a watch or you call a cell phone uh, or you call a battery this thing what do you call this uh, power bank you will find very very interesting and uh, a way to beat around the existing problem and then make sure understand no he is talking about you should have a seal so that uh, external air won't come inside but how do you cool the equipment not easy no so all it needs is probably on one of the walls you put a heat sink which has fins on one side and the other side we have some more fins to fin to fin it can be conduction so you have internal circulation on one side secondary air on the other side and that itself is sufficient for us to cool that is how in fact is how all the large racks and all are cooled on the panel at the back of the panel we have a refrigerator that refrigerator is very similar to your split uh, ac so you have an evaporator inside which will do all the cooling probably somewhere at the bottom and then you have a box like thing sticking out on the back of the panel that is where you have the condenser but inside and outside are isolated only you need a small opening for the working fluid to go through so a air conditioned uh, equipment and probably in your case no you may even rig it up so very small commercial acs are available uh, which are called you know 0.75 ton uh, or 0.5 ac ton rated uh, refrigerators so if you have to make a rack you don't not worry too much about it no try to make things as good as this seal the whole thing replace the back panel with a cooling panel then you are in business thank you